growth, transforming businesses through technology disruption. I would request the speakers, uh, Mr. Somesh Gupta, Mr. Puneet Mittal, Mr. Chintan Bakshi, Mr. R. Vardarajan, Mr. Hilal Khan, and Mr. Dinesh Goplani to please come on dais. Infotech would be chairing the session. So I just introduce him and hand over the baton to him. Mr. Somesh Gupta has 25 years plus of experience in IT services industry across diverse areas, including large scale transformation, organization change management, delivery excellence, and customer management. He is also a subject matter expert in blockchain and cryptocurrency. Before joining Pinnacle as chief growth officer, he was center head of uh, Infosys Jaipur campus. And in addition to overseeing the administrative and operational function, his role included leading organizational change management activities, creation of client-facing teams, and knowledge management systems. He has graduated from IIT BHU Varanasi with Bachelor's of Technology degree in Electrical Engineering. Subsequently, he completed his Master's of Business Administration, Finance, Strategy, Economics from IIM Calcutta. So with this, I request you to take charge of session. Over to you. Thank you, Atul, for those kind words. Friends, IoT, while the sexier part of IoT is on the consumer side, the real impact of IoT is on the industrial side, on the B2B side. In the last session, we saw how IoT um, uh, th there's a company, Eris, that basically has uh, IoT devices connected across and are providing innovative technologies. Uh, I come from Pinnacle Infotech. We are a virtual design construction company, the largest of its kind in the world, have been there for more than 30 years. And one of the ways that we're using IoT is when you build a complex building, let's say a stadium, an airport, uh, a hotel, uh, a mixed-use uh, building, you need to operate it for many, many decades. When you're operating a large building, you need to know, you need to do predictive maintenance, you need to do schedule maintenance, you need to take care of various, let's say, HVAC devices, electrical devices, uh, archi architectural components. You can put a number of IoT sensors across the building, get data from those devices, analyze them using the bi uh, big data techniques, and then start servicing or maintaining the building. We have a proprietary technology uh, called Digital Twin that basically consists of uh, a service ten, twin, uh, uh, an IoT twin, and a data twin that combines a number of technologies along with IoT and helps you create a digital twin of a building, of an electrical room, a mechanical room, and some of my colleagues sitting here are implementing this technology for one of the world's busiest airport, uh, Dubai airport. Um, and we can efficiently apply this technology. Now, I am hoping that today's session, today's panel discussion, the esteemed panelists can throw light on how IoT and devices and various technologies can, uh, can uh, help people, industries, and companies at large uh, and make lives of everyone much better. Uh, I have privilege and honor to invite Puneet, Mr. Puneet Mittal, who is the Managing Director of Pratham Software. He is a co-founder and CEO of PSI, which is a leading provider of software services in the areas of software product engineering and BPM. It caters to technology needs of startups, SMBs, and Fortune 500 companies, including companies from US, UK, Canada, 
Europe and Australia. He is an active angel investor. So those of you who are looking for money for your ventures, here's Puneet for you. And he has invested in various companies through Rajasthan Angel Investor Network and uh, so on and so forth. He is a uh, graduate from our own MNIT Jaipur and actively contributes to various professional fora and is associated with many social organizations, including Pratham Siksha, a charitable school for underprivileged children. Puneet for you. Thank you so much, Jay. Respected uh, dignitaries here, members and part of uh, FIKI and audience. So I will uh, touch base basically on my experience uh, of last 22 years in IT and maybe I will also touch uh, my experience into IoT and maybe in AI field also. So to start with actually I will, I will come up with some of the data, interesting data for you, all of you. Indian IT industry in the last year has done a business of $227 billion and $227 billion is 7.5% uh, of the Indian GDP. So it's a big number, a big uh, number especially in case of like uh, I would say the employment generated by IT because there is a direct job, there is an indirect job. So it has really provided a lot of job. In terms of direct job, it has uh, provided 5 million people. As on today, there are 5 million people just in IT. And I'm not talking about the e-commerce industry, I'm not talking about the tel telecom industry, I'm only talking about the IT and ITES, sometimes it's called BPM, which can include hardware, software, export, import. Still, we are a majority of export industry and uh, I think only $50 billion of uh, IT business is being done or IT is, uh, uh, is done in India and rest is basically into export. But our domestic market is growing, growing much more than our export market. So we can see the huge future here. Uh, in terms of uh, like we all have seen uh, the growing story of startups in India. India has already crossed uh, 100 uh, unicorns recently, the largest uh, I would say <coughs> growing country in terms of unicorns. Uh, though still we are number three, uh, America is number two, uh, number one with 800 plus I think and uh, China is with uh, 200 plus and India has crossed 100 plus. And I think fourth and fifth is uh, basically, uh, uh, Israel is fourth which is very close to India, it's small country and UK is fifth. So we are contributing, I, I would say this IT startup is really contributing a lot of wealth to India and we are also contributing it to the world. Again, coming to Jaipur, actually when we started the business, I remember that we took the STPI, uh, this, uh, uh, there was a connection, ISDN connection, which was a dial-up connection and there were four companies and we used to share that dial-up connection between four of us. No lease line, the dial-up, uh, this BSNL line was very, very slow. The only, I would say, 128 kbps connection was given by STPI, and that is where we got a lot of help, and four companies were sharing one dial-up internet connection. From that day, actually, we have come up a long way. Uh, I think uh, uh, earlier everybody used to know Pratham Software who was in IT and now when I go to the college and college pass out, they ask, okay, what is Pratham Software, right? Because there are a lot of product companies, startup companies. In fact, I tell you that they also ask, okay, what is Infosys Wipro? Because right now they are not interested in these kind of companies. They're more interested in Google, Amazon, Flipkart, whatever it is. So the time has changed in Jaipur itself I personally feel that there might be around 25,000 to 50,000 IT professionals just in Jaipur, not in Rajasthan. And there are a lot of hundreds of companies, even I do, uh, hundreds of companies having more than 100 people in Jaipur. Even more than 1,000 people, which even I do not know that which are the. Recently, I was talking to Mr. Uh, uh, Gupta ji and. Uh, this pinnacle, actually, I was surprised to know that there are 700 people, they are in Jaipur, and uh, we do not know that that kind of big company is also in Jaipur. So Jaipur market has really become a big market for IT, for a startup, and I think that's good news for all of you. Coming to IoT, uh, so 
as on today, if you see today, uh, actually I was searching on that. So we have around 14 billion, estimated 14 billion connected device, IoT devices. And installed devices may be even double, but we have 14 billion. The world population is only 8 billion, so every person has almost two connected devices. That's it, that is on today, but it is growing very fast. Right? When we reach the 50 billion and 100 billion, we do not know. Uh, so how it is changing, and I start with the, uh, the old, let us go to the old when the motor was invented, the electrical motor was invented. And when the, when the motor was invented, everything was around motor. So if there is a motor in the industry, then the building will be designed around the motor. Everything will be designed around the motor. The motor room was the most important room, right? Then actually the production of motors increased. And as on today, as on today, Average American car, if you are sitting in a car, can you guess how many motors you might have? Any guess? So you have motors in, uh, uh, in doors, you have motors in power window, you have motors, of course, in wheels, you have motor in wiper, you have motor in glass, right? So everywhere, there are around 40 motors in a single car which you are sitting. So think of the one motor which was so important around uh, uh, in the whole world. Now you have 40 motors just in a car, right? So same thing is uh, happening in IoT, like uh, uh, it is just a starting, I would say. It's just a starting. Same thing happened uh, uh, actually uh, in the chip industry when in 60s or 70s when chip came, uh, Moore actually started, uh, Moore said, uh, uh, I think you people might be knowing about Moore's law, which is the power of the chip will double every 18 months. So from that day till now 50 years, we have seen uh, everywhere chips, 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 and as on today, uh, as on this year, around 1 trillion chips are in, in work. 1 trillion chip. chip. So again, every person, if there is a 8 billion pe uh, population, then every person is having around 125 chips per person, which is again changing every year and increasing. So think of, uh, in again, coming back to 60s when the computer came, okay, uh, Microsoft, Apple, they, they, they came, and then there was, uh, Computer was again a very costly commodity, I would say. It was only available in the research institute, uh, uh, universities like Harvard and MIT. And in initial days when internet was not there, the universities people were talking to another university, right? It was kind of intranet and they were doing the chat. So chat was the first application, uh, I would say. Then this uh, slowly and slowly computers uh, were cheaper they became more. So what is the internet? It is a connection of computers, right? So slowly and slowly computers were connected and they were more connected, more connected. And then applications came automatically, like one application was Hotmail. So somebody thought of that, okay, if computer is connected, then maybe I can send, I am sending chat, but why not I am sending something which can be there, okay? So they stored the information at one computer and another computer is sending information to the third computer. So that is how email was invented. And from there onwards, I would say the next era came of search where information was there. Then uh, the internet uses, I would say even before that e-commerce came, then uh, uh, this LinkedIn and uh, social networking. So there are so many applications came automatically which nobody could imagine in 60s and 70s that that is the world going to happen while the computers were connected, right? and there may be only billions of uh, computer connected. Now think of that if a two billion or three billion computers are connected and changing our life to this extent, what will happen then 50 billion non-computer device, okay, IoT device will be connected. So what we are thinking right now, we cannot imagine the same way, the same way when we did not think that e-commerce can happen or email can happen or social networking can happen. I, we do not know how many platforms will be generated out of AIT while all these devices were connected and they are also connected to computer. So think of how many applications which even we cannot imagine can be generated out of it. So, uh, 
we are using, uh, uh, we have a lot of IT, uh, sorry, this IoT projects in our company. I will not go into detail. We have a lot of AI also. I can see, I can say one thing that, like IoT is changing the world, but even AI, I personally feel that uh, like what internet has done in the last 50 years, the AI and robotics has, will be doing in the next 50 years. And we are here, there to see it. I also think that uh, the way, actually when in 60s the computer was coming, nobody has thought that everybody will have a computer, right? Now, uh, this uh, Alexa has come, Siri has come, not much of use, but I can really see or visualize that after 30, 40 years, everybody will be using robot, and I'm sure that a uh, uh, lot of jobs, uh, like servants at home, driver, driver will be replaced by autonomous car, Coke, automated Coke. So robot will do any task for uh, you what anybody can do. So it will be easier life uh, and it is always uh, the benefit of technology that it makes life easier. And if I see the Viceroy of India in 1940s or 1920s, let us say 1920s, 100 years back, the Viceroy of India used to have the number one power, number one facility. Now we here sitting have more power, more, not more power, power of course we do not have, but more facilities than what the Viceroy was having. Viceroy, if he needs information, he has to go to library. He doesn't have a good AC, he has to go to Shimla. Uh, so uh, if, if he is sick, let us say TB, uh, then he is gone, right? Now TB is no more as a disease. So what we enjoy as on today is much more than what even the strongest, even the president of uh, United States would enjoy. And the same thing will happen, is going to happen in next 40 years, right? You can see. So, uh, so recently I, uh, uh, I funded a few companies. One of the company I'm advisor of is uh, MenuF app. So this is uh, basically in uh, a startup into which uh, takes care of the shop floor uh, work of any manufacturing industry. So we, we started with basically uh, computer vision where actually we would be putting the cameras and that cameras will observe the various machine moving. Right. And with the uh, use of artificial int intelligence and these all cameras were connected through hub, through again through computer and the internet, uh, they were doing the analysis that okay, which machine is working, which machine is not working, which machine is running faster, slow faster. So all these all, all these observations is done and the data is being generated. So that was pretty successful. Then actually in any manufacturing industry, there are energy uh, energy meters. There are vibrator meters. And nowadays, these meters, cameras are only 3,000, 4,000. Right? Anybody can afford number of cameras. So by use of energy meters, actually we are generating, again from the energy meter, we are generating the data which is which we are storing, doing the analysis, and a lot of applications, if the, if the machine is going down, or if the machine is consuming more electricity, or if the machine is looking for more maintenance. So all these uh, applications can be monitored basically easily. So this is just a small thing. Then actually we have funded, uh, uh, I have funded a company, uh, Kenite Bot, which is a chatbot company. Uh, they have thousands of already bought. 300 bots, uh, 300 customers, we have paid customers who are paying us every customer more than a lakh rupees. Uh, and the good thing is that uh, they are not replacing manual. They are actually better than manual. Because in manual, suppose there, you need some information, it will take some time for you to search the information and respond. But this automated chatbot, they instantly respond. And companies are now buying our chatbot, not because that it is uh, it will save the manpower, or not because that uh, you do not have the manpower, but also because that actually it will generate a better answer. And uh, our, uh, uh, so this Kenneth chatbot uh, we invested, this is basically generated, this is for lead generation. So companies buy it on uh, their website, their, uh, they put on WhatsApp, Facebook, and the lead generation, which they were doing manually, it has become two to three times, just by installing this automated chatbot. So anyway, I think my time is coming to end, and uh, I would again like to say that uh, I would like to be born uh, always later than today. 
So every new generation is uh, luckier than us because they will be living in a different world, which they know that what we have done, but we do not know what they will be doing. So I always believe that they will be luckier, but they will all, but their further generation will be more lucky. And uh, uh, they are in a, I would say, exponential world, a world of singularity, right, where uh, data is the fuel. Just on data, I tell you that, that uh, like initial when there was, uh, like before BC, what was the data? Maybe some script written on a stone, maybe some painting written on a stone, maybe those all things, right? So the data was limited. Then, according to an expert, next 1750 years, like some Fuller expert, he said that by 1750, the data was doubled. So in 1750 years, the human generated data, which was double of what generated in a million year, right? Now this doubling speed is also becoming very, very fast, right? So it was earlier centuries, then it became years, now it is coming to months, and doubling is becoming maybe even in days, right? So the number of data, the amount of data which we generate in one year may be the more data which we have generated ever since now. And I can prove it. So I was talking about this uh, uh, surveillance camera. So there are one billion surveillance camera installed as on today approximately. Every surveillance uh, camera is generating the data and recording the data, right? Now think of how much data is being recorded as on today and 20 years back. And I'm only talking about one IoT device, which is a surveillance camera, right? So the amount of data it is we are generating now in the new world and the amount of information we have and an amount of uh, analytics and the information we can collect is unimaginable. So with that, thank you all. Thank you, Puneet. Um, what you spoke, especially in terms of uh, data points, is really interesting. How India did business of $227 billion last year in IT and ITES. How um, IoT and AI interact with each other, and you give uh, good examples of energy meters relevant to all of us and surveillance cameras and, and the numbers there. But the, the biggest takeaway for me from what you said is those examples, those examples of companies that you've invested in. And I'd encourage the audiences to uh, take up this opportunity and come with your ideas to Puneet. Thank you so much, Puneet. Next, I have the pleasure of inviting my good friend uh, Chintan Bakshi, who's a partner of, for incubation in CII uh, Eco. And uh, this CII Eco is India's leading startup incubation center, leading the regional incubation vertical. I, I remember about seven, eight years back when we invited uh, I am Ahmedabad uh, based CIIE to partner with RICO, Government of Rajasthan, uh, and how they started uh, the startup um, OSS, which basically changed the nature of how startups think, behave, and um, accelerate in Rajasthan. Um, now, Chintan brings in a unique experience of starting and scaling social enterprises and tech startup companies, especially in the impact sector, which is the rural and the bottom of pyramid space. He has a number of years of project management experience in the companies like Feedback Ventures, Maruti and the Taj Group, and 19 years as founder and in startup incubation experiences. He has personally co-founded a couple of startups in the past, an electronic uh, procurement platform in 2001, and a mobile-enabled rural distribution startup in 2006. He has been with CIA CEO uh, since 2013, leading the regional incubation vertical. Uh, he is based out of Jaipur, uh, of course. Uh, Chintan is an in engineering graduate from IIT Delhi, uh, an MBA from IIM Bangalore. He is passionate about adoption of experiential and alternative education systems and revival of our age-old Indic and indigenous knowledge and spiritual traditions in India. 
I must confess that he does look like Guru in his current avatar. Chintan for you. Thank you, Somesh Ji, and thank you, Fiki, for inviting me for this, uh, uh, for this program. Uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to really talk about a few startups, uh, and that's really what we really know, uh, which are trying to disrupt uh, the current status quo or trying to solve problems using, fundamentally using IoT, but a lot of other things. And that's, that's really what the nature of IoT is, that it's not a kind of a standalone technology, it, it goes along with, as, as Puneet was talking about, AI and various other things. Uh, and that's what I'm going to really focus on. Uh, before I start, uh, just a quick introduction about CI Co. Uh, so CI Co is the incubation center at IIM Ahmedabad. Uh, we are now, we have now become a fairly large entity. We started as a center in IIM Ahmedabad with a few people and now we have four uh, SBUs as part of CI Co and uh, CI Nest uh, is where Startup Voices is, is also hosted, uh, you know, where we have been working with the Rajasthan government, uh, where we work in the regions and we are now also working in, in other regions like Madhya Pradesh, uh, Assam, uh, Punjab, etc. where in fact with STPI we have done a couple of programs in, in the last couple of years. Uh, we have Catalyst which looks at seed funding and acceleration which is based out of Ahmedabad. We also have a a very strong research team based in Ahmedabad called CI Insights, given that we are part of an academic institution like IIM Ahmedabad. And then we have CI Capital where we have a few, a uh, couple of uh, venture capital funds uh, like Bharat Fund, Bharat Inclusion Fund, etc. based out of. Just a quick overview. Uh, I'll start with a, with one startup, is it visible? Yeah, called InnoFarms. It's based in Jaipur. Uh, I think they're, uh, they have a small unit in Sitapura. Uh, fundamentally, you know, startups are about problem solving and the problem that they were trying to solve was for horticulture farmers, for farmers who are producing fruits. Uh, you know, they have to essentially transport the entire fruit uh, to the mandi, right? And a lot of wastage is there and there's a, there's a huge uh, transportation cost. So they came up with this technology, uh, which is like a micro processing plant, which can be installed very close to the farm and therefore rather than trying to transport the entire fruit, you just transport the pulp and they also do the back end tie up with fruit processing units and all that and the farmer ends up getting almost like a 2x uh, income increase. Now what's the IoT angle? Uh, see without IoT something like this can really not work. Uh, so uh, essentially it does two things, uh, one is that it's, it's the machine is connected uh, it's, it's because it's installed in remote areas, so you need to know how it is functioning. There may be one operator there, uh, but you need to monitor parameters as to how it's functioning, what's the throughput, quality, etc. Uh, there is also a traceability <coughs> element. So every lot of fruit which comes in, there's a almost like a batch identity and you exactly know that this, this is the batch which came from this farmer. So you can actually trace the pulp to the particular farmer to the farm from where it is coming from. Uh, so they are uh, a startup that, that we have supported. Uh, they have deployed these units not only in Rajasthan but also in other states, typically the fruit producing states like Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Maharashtra, etc. Uh, and this, as, as I mentioned, this has impact in terms of not only increasing farmer in income but also reducing wastage and transportation. In fact, they are also positioning themselves as a sustainability startup because rather than transporting X tons, now you will essentially be transporting a much smaller uh, amount of uh, quantity. Uh, there's, there's a very interesting use case of IoT in the craft sector, which is, you know, something which is very, very predominant in Rajasthan. Uh, one of the basic, one of the major issues of the craft sector is how do you uh, certify whether this product is handmade? Right? There are a lot of machine-made clones going around. Uh, I mean, you find block-printed things in Bapu Nagar, etc. for 300, 400, 500 rupees. You know, it's not possible to create a handmade block-print uh, product at that price. Uh, and, you know, people who can understand are able to make it out. So, Kosha is really trying to solve that problem. So, what they do is, it's a very interesting solution. Uh, if you see, in each handloom, they have an IoT device. That device... In addition to being an IoT device, it also monitors vibrations of that particular handloom. So handlooms work at a, at a very low RPM, 
right? You are basically doing it from your using your feet or your hands, uh, while a machine-made loom or a or a power loom will be working at a motor kind of RP RPM, thousand, twelve hundred uh, uh, RPM. But this will be at a at a much lower RPM, so it's able to monitor that and that and it uses that to certify whether it is a uh, a hand loom product or it's a power loom product. And what it does is, so what the artisan has to do, let's say they make a carpet, they are given these QR codes. So once the carpet is made, the information of that carpet is stored on the cloud. right? So this guy has to basically put it on and off whenever the carpet starts and automatically detects. That information then, then gets captured in this QR code. right? So the artisan essentially scans the QR code, it gets linked to that information and this QR code is then uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, pasted or sewed into the carpet. So, the, uh, you know, at the label of the carpet, you get this QR code. So, let's say the carpet goes to the US or Europe, wherever it's meant for. The customer there can actually do two things. One is that they get certified that it's a handmade product made by an artisan in a village in, in Rajasthan. And it also tells you about the location where it was made and when it was made. Right? It started on 1st of August and co was completed by... 15th of September or whatever, right? And that uh, also gives the customer an indication of the value because a handmade product will take a lot of time to make. Uh, so this is another startup that we have supported and this is how they are using IoT. Uh, the IoT element, as I mentioned, is that the entire footprint, fingerprint of the carpet that is made is stored on the cloud and then it is extracted back into the QR code, which is then stitched onto the carpet and the carpet goes wherever it's, it's meant to go. Uh, another quick uh, use case for the agri sector and there are quite a few startups which are trying to do that essentially monitoring the soil health the uh, the the plant moisture health the atmospheric conditions etc and then doing recommendations based on that so again a simple device which a farmer has to there are two devices one which the farmer has to put in the soil and second one which which they install which is like a weather uh, microclimate station and based on and then these are all connected to the uh, to the cloud and the farmer gets recommendations on his phone on the basis of the specific soil health soil moisture nutrient uh, content and the weather conditions and it gives recommendations on crop irrigation spray management and things like that <coughs> there are multiple startups in india which are trying to do it of course people are using various so all of these if you if you see this one uses an ai engine to do the recommendations and which kind of improves over a period of time uh, you know uh, so yeah so combination of ai and uh, iot which which they are trying to use uh, and you know this is the <coughs> the one in the blue is the impact that they have been able to achieve a 50% reduction in water 20% increase in is in yield and a 25% increase in farmer income because of better yields and all that <coughs> Sorry, there's another startup in a different domain called Neophony. Uh, so they are essentially using the brain impulses, which are electromagnetic impulses. And there is this device uh, which is basically able to capture those impulses. Uh, and it then takes it to the cloud. And again, there's a AI engine which runs algorithms uh, there. And it's able to then recommend what you need to do to sort of calm down your mind. So it's basically from a mental health perspective. They are not looking at seriously ill patients. They are looking at people who need rest, corporate employees, etc. Uh, so this is a device, uh, the headband which you put there. It's got some eight electrodes. It's able to detect these electrical impulses and then recommend that, you know, this is the music you need to listen to or this is the kind of meditation that you need to do or this is the kind of breathing exercise that you need to do. So all of these things are there, but they are actually able to link it to the condition of the person, which may be different from person to person, right? While we while we use stress as a general term, but stress can be also of different types, and then they, therefore there can be a lot of solutions around that. So there's an entire science behind it. One of the pioneers in that science is on the uh, on the board of this this company. Uh, it's called Newphony. Uh, just one or two quick examples, and then I'll wrap up. Uh, another use case is in the sewage detection. So we know that deep sewers. There's a, there's a very high incidence of overflow or leakage, etc., which has health issues and all that, uh, and environmental issues. So, And there are some norms that sewage pipes need to be checked on a regular basis. Uh, in India, uh, perhaps they may not be formed, uh, you know, followed to that extent, but even in the US, you know, you they basically let in cameras, and then they take pictures, and then there are manual uh, interventions. People have to manually check those images and then come up that, okay, 
you know after 10 kilometers there is likely to be a leakage or you know there needs to be maintenance and all that so these people have created a a robot which goes with the camera and then it throws the information back to the cloud and there they have based on uh, close to 1.5 lakh feet of imaging that they have done of existing sewer systems it's able to intelligently detect that okay these are the areas where there is possibility of leakage or there is a flow is high or the corrosion is happening etc so currently most of their customers are not in india some of their customers are in india maharashtra etc but they're essentially initially targeting the uh, global markets but objective is they are based out of uh, in fact the founders are from jodhpur they are based out of india but the objective is to try and see how this technology can be used in the indian context this is the last uh, example again with an agri kind of a focus there's a company called urdhavam uh, what they essentially do how they are using iot is they essentially uh, help in recharging bore wells that have gone dry which is a huge problem in india right the water table goes down and then there's a bore well that a farmer may have dug for uh, whatever a couple of lakh rupees and you can't use it the way they do it is uh, they let a, uh, a robotic arm into the dry bore well the robotic arm goes there it does imaging like the way it shows here uh, then it it it's able to uh, you know send out some ultrasonic signals and the 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 details of those signals are sent to the cloud and based on that it's able to detect the location of the aquifer the first aquifer the unconfined aquifer jahan pe ki barish sabse pehle aati hai so whenever the monsoons comes it's the unconfined aquifer where the water settles down and then it seeps down into the deeper aquifers so on those initial aquifers it's able to the robotic arm itself is able to do some perforations so that when the next rainfall comes in the bore gets recharged uh, so they have done close to 2000 installations and about 1600 out of out of those 2000 bore wells have uh, kind of uh, improved in the sense that they are they have uh, got water i mean the others maybe you know in the future rain rains etc it will happen but that's a a pretty high uh, sort of a uh, success rate so i just thought i'll i'll just give a quick sense of uh, some of the startups which are essentially using iot to solve problems which may not be which may not sound very high tech i mean these are problems of farmer income how does a artisan income improve even in the case of uh, kosha i talked about one of the biggest impact has been uh, uh, an increase in the artisanal income because now he can claim that this is 100% handmade and you know uh, in europe or wherever it can be sold as sustainable fabric and and they get a higher throughput uh, so yeah these are some examples of how uh, iot can be used along with other technologies to create social impact by doing disruption by startups i mean a lot of these are all of these are all startups which are working on some of these new technologies and focusing on solving a problem of a specific customer segment thank you very much thanks a lot Thank you so much, Chintan, for giving us a glimpse of some of the great work going on in the state of Rajasthan, uh, funded, of course, by, by uh, CIA Co. Um, some, some great examples, SNL Farms, Kosha is a, is a great one. I, I, I thought you could basically establish credentials only using blockchain, but you've shown how it can be done otherwise as well. Uh, near X, um, sewage detection using fluid robotics, Urdhwam is an in interesting one. But personally, um, I'd like to use the device from Neurophony to calm the mind, right? That's the personal, biggest personal takeaway from me. Uh, I, I think this, um, today's um, uh, summit is, is, is great one for me. Uh, there, there are great examples of uh, practical usage of uh, IoT devices, just to give you a sense of um, how we personally uh, in Pinnacle can help some of these startups is we work, for example, on, on the largest stadium in the world, the FIFA World Cup inaugural stadium, Lucille Stadium. Uh, the team in Jaipur, 200 people team in Jaipur has worked on that. We've recently started work on the largest um, uh, largest mall in the world, and we've, we've got a huge contract. Uh, we, we maybe can collaborate and 
take some of these startups from the state of Rajasthan to some of our customers. Uh, we work with uh, the largest chip manufacturers in the world, the TSMCs, the Texas Instruments, the Intels, on, on their buildings and building systems. Uh, we work on Stadia, we work on airports. Uh, some of our experts are here. We, we probably can do that. Thank you so much, Chintan, for, for taking us through this. Next, um, uh, I would, uh, after, um, after uh, an entrepreneur and uh, then an accelerator, I would like to invite uh, Mr. R. Varadrajan, who is from the field of education. Uh, he is from Department of Information Technology and Communication. Sorry, my bad. Uh, an administrator. Um, he is from Department of Information Technology and Communication, Government of Rajasthan. Uh, he is Masters in Computer Science and Business Administration. He joined NIC, National Informatics Center, in 1988 and worked on various e-governance projects at the grassroots grassroot levels of district and state, states. He joined Department of IT and Communication, Government of Rajasthan in, way back in 1995 and has been involved in some of their flagship e-governance projects, including land records management, revenue court ma case management, the state data center, which we are very proud of, wildlife surveillance, and anti-poaching systems, as well as disaster management information systems. Uh, I request uh, Mr. Varad Rajan to talk about his experiences. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Shomesh. Uh, I am here on behalf of uh, Department of Information Technology and Communication. I would be taking you to what exactly the government of Rajasthan has done. I think you must be reading in the newspapers, and otherwise also you must be aware of it, that a lot of initiatives has been taken by the IT department in the state, and its flagship programs are being uh, going in such a manner that in a nationwide level, Rajasthan is the top on the IT initiatives. I'll take you to some of the initiatives uh, which are, you know, from, from very diversified fields. And then I'll be taking you to IOTs and how government is planning and what exactly government has done by means of utilizing IOTs for the welfare of the state. You must have all heard about eMitra services. Rajasthan has got more than 80,000 eMitra centers which are running in all across Rajasthan which are run by small, you know, from village to urban areas and other places. Other than that, Rajasthan state has come out with a unique solution of eMitra Plus. eMitra Plus is a, not a man-driven uh, 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 any, any uh, methodology. It's driven by a machine. eMitra Plus is a machine. It's an ATM-like machine. Around 14,000 machines are installed at various locations in the state, in the urban and rural areas, wherein in rural areas those are installed in the Gram Panchayats. In Gram Panchayas, it allows the facility to the ruler, ruler masses for making their various payment to the bills, electricity bills, water bills, getting their certificates online, getting them printed on a secured paper. And other than that, those machines can also are also being utilized for the purpose of video conferencing. Suppose somebody, sometimes Honorable Chief Minister wanted to address a ruler masses, Pan Rajasthan. So they can always go and sit beside those machine villagers and they can access to whatever is being stated by the Honorable CM or any other dignitaries. So th uh, th those machines are integrated machines. Other than that, we, you must have all come across because you all belongs probably belongs to Jaipur. You must have come across to the uh, place called Jalana Dungri where the two smart buildings have been uh, built. Those are also built by the IT department. One is a startup ecosystem has been developed for the startups of the Rajasthan that we call as a Bhamasha Techno Hub. There are about 800 startups are already functioning. Government has provided them infrastructure and other facilities and hold, hand holding them by means of finance and other peripheral uh, The second building is a data center, state data center, which is a tier 4 data center. It is the largest data center of the country by any government department. So it has got 400 pods sorry, 600 pots, which can occupy more than 20,000 servers. It has got best state of our technologies available. And this ecosystem is functioning 
and allowing all the government data to be stored at one location. Jan Aadhaar, you must have got it, you must be using it, so it is a family identity given to individual families of the state and those can be utilized for getting various benefits, various uh, schemes can be utilized using that. Chiranjeevi and RGHS for uh, all the masses, that is also uh, uh, being the enabler of that department, the IT department. And for our government, for government fellows, we have a Rajka system where we use all e-filing facilities, uh, our ACRs, our credential report, our property returns, all are being filed using this system. I-Start is again started by the government of Rajasthan, which is for providing various facilities to the entrepreneurs and uh, startups. Uh, Abhay Com Command and Control Center is developed for uh, capturing the traffic information, traffic pictures, all over the Rajasthan, each divisional headquarter and the district headquarters has got a Abhay control and command center wherein all uh, the, the cameras are installed in various uh, prominent locations of the cities, all the cities and those are uh, being seen by the police officials and 100 facility of the police is also put into the same place wherein any, any possibility, any issues comes so then that can be taken care of. Other than that, Rajasthan has uh, built a uh, Rajnet facility wherein all the gram panchayas to the state level, the data center till data center, everything is connected through a network. Uh, the backbone is provided through various uh, redundant uh, backbones are there for communication channels. So those are also being done. Other than that, uh, in Rajasthan, it is a specialized job has been done for the forest also. We have a wildlife surveillance and anti-poaching systems installed in all uh, centuries, all tiger parks. Like we have in Jhalana uh, Panther uh, Safari, we have a uh, 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 this surveillance system. In uh, Ranthambor we have, in Sariska also we have. We have put a, a PTZ cameras which keeps on moving and which keeps on giving feeding the information that can be seen live from anywhere. And in Aranya Bhavan, we have a command center where things can be seen if uh, who is encroaching the uh, forest area who is cutting and what sort of other uh, illegal activities are going on that can be seen live and other than that few more uh, parks has been identified by the government like Mukundra and there we are also planning to put them there uh, these cameras over there uh, we have e bazaar facility all court cases uh, maybe it is of revenue cases or any cases those are also put into a common domain and uh, that can be seen because earlier for court filing and other things one has to go to the court and see their next date of hearing causeless information those are also put a common platform has been developed by which uh, anybody can any uh, suppose in case of revenue board if a per case is going on in revenue board and a person from jaisalmer he need not to travel for find, finding the status of the case he can write from there he can see that so that is also a unique solution we have given uh, in case of uh, iot's there is a scada system which has been provided to the phed phed at jaipur has got again a command center wherein all the water resources their uh, water uh, metering uh, uh, sort of a you know movement of water the treatment of water distribution of water everything is controlled through by means of putting iot's devices by means of some company from japan they are doing it so scada system is also in place in case of education we have a e gyan portal e learning portal a lot of things has been done now let us these are the some of the initiatives which have already been functioning for last couple of years in the state of rajasthan I would like to take you forward for various other applications of IOTs which can be, you know, really uh, going, uh, which can be very, very beneficial to the masses for the general public and uh, we can take it forward from what we have done till now. In case of surveillance and critical uh, trafficking, we can always put various cameras like some of the uh, prominent uh, uh, the presenters, they talked about uh, traffic, traffic, uh, going traffic and some congestion in the traffic and some, suppose some, somebody finds a medical emergency so there may be some ambulances traveling and there is some uh, a traffic congestion so in that case these IOTs if they are installed at right prominent places they can always guide and create a sort of a green corridor now what happens in the green corridor at present the police and other forces are to be put into place and then uh, the green corridor is created for carrying any organ or maybe any ill patient or serious patient, critical patient. In case of IOTs, these devices will control the lights of these cities. 
the traffic will be controlled through these uh, server sensors they will be picking the traffic and they will be looking to the requirements and based on that the lighting the traffic lighting system will also be governed by those sensors the logical the process the, the information received through those sensors will be processed with certain algorithms and that will create a green corridor and, and then vehicle can pass and provide facilities uh, in case of environmental monitoring pollution can be controlled by means of iot's and it would be done because as of now what we have done is only a part which is you know there is a manual intervention manual requirement is there in case of iot's there will be less of a interfa interface between the human and the machines the things will be controlled by means of uh, uh, the, 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 the decided algorithm or ai and ml those will be taking forward these things in case of healthcare again lot of things are happening if you see uh, you must have all come across Ayur arogya setu while covid was on its peak everybody was asked to use arogya setu app by government of india and suppose somebody falls sick he need to simply say i am sick so at least you, once you open the app you will be able to see your surrounding through bluetooth or some other technology you can see how many in 500 meters or in 1 kilometer how many sick people are there and you can take decision according to going to that those location or not uh, in case of agriculture also mr bakshi has talked about uh, uh, some some of the things like uh, uh, in case of boring boring water or something it can be taken forward like it can be uh, iot's can be installed uh, to look for the sensors can be uh, put into place to check the light quality the humidity the temperature the soil moisture the crop health and these things can be processed by a fast quick method so that uh, the farmers get the maximum yield out of whatever they are sowing so that that can also be make use of that uh, other than that there are a lot of government services or uh, kycs are being done online so in case of uh, aadhar can be util utilized aadhar is a wonderful uh, tool by which you can it can one can go kycs already banks are doing it so those things can also be uh, done by means of uh, iot's and i i'll talk couple of applications of uh, smart cities smart city application like i already talked about a traffic management that can be controlled the garbage collection and disposal can also be taken care of uh, garbage containers and uh, in our nearby society you can see it's all, most of the time overfilled so there can be sensors put into a right place on in those garbage containers which can ensure that once a particular certain level is reached the message is goes to the uh, the van which collects the garbage from that and van can go there and can make it empty and again it can be filled something like that can be can taken care of street lights we most of the find we find around us that street lights are on and nobody bothers about it usually now now latest systems are there the timings are given but in otherwise also there can be sensors there can be methodology by which these street light can be uh, controlled by means of lights suppose if there there is a dark cloud that switch in the in the afternoon also the light can be switched on and when it is a light during especially during summers it can sometime it can be started about 7:30 also so it will save, save lot of money to the government water leakage and distribution can also be controlled through iot's parking management we are already suffering from most of the cities are suffering through par parking management if those things are put into place a person can identify by means of his mobile or any other infotainment system his car by which he can simply find the right parking and availability of that he can simply take his vehicle and park it there something can be done pollution can always be done smart metering is already being done that can further be taken up at the same time why we talked about so many things but there are few challenges especially in once we talk about policies as a, at the government level there are certain challenges which need to be uh, thought about which need to be looked into to overcome uh, issues which may arise in the future i'll uh, put them into two part one is the technology uh, technological challenges one is non technological challenges technological challenges i would say because uh, at once upon a time around around uh, 10 years back the iot devices iot sensors were costing about 1.3 1.4 dollars now it is less than 0.2 0.3 dollars available 
so there has to be some standard has to be put into this so because there will be a lot of data exchanges would be done so therefore that uh, standard has to be taken care of the high quality protocol need to be put into place so that uh, those protocol and algorithms are being followed and uh, your government need to or the even if it's a private company it need to incorporate the ai and ml which which is a time consuming costly and other affairs that also put into uh, that is again a challenge for uh, things then data interoperability is also needed the security is again a challenge because secure for security also you need a lot of uh, things to be put into place so that our data is secured and it is not misused something like that to be a lot of firewalls security protocols security devices has to be put into place that is a technological part non technological part for iot's you require to have a lot of policy changes then you require to have a mindset changes then you you have a you have to have a legal changes to be to taken care of legal issues may arise and uh, uh, the in case of medical sciences you really have to take care of uh, the data pri pri uh, privacy has to be taken because we don't have a data privacy it's still not passed in in our country so data protection is very important so data protection law has to be in place so that if suppose say somebody information medical information is uploaded and it is being seen by somebody else that that should not be allowed so therefore those has to challenges also has to be taken some certain regulation and procedure are to be put into place so these are the some of the areas which i have tried to cover which government is doing and of course if we see but we don't we can't stop it we will be uh, around 15 years back or 20 years back we never thought about the penetration of computer, uh, mobiles we will be having in our life similarly iot's are the days ahead and we will be we will be surrounded by that and we will be taking best use of that uh, at the same time we have to go for a human just as ma'am also said we will have to go for a humanity is also is very important so in order to reach to the a uh, last mile and uh, the last person standing in the queue has to be served in the right manner thank you thank you varad rajan ji um, you spoke about multiple examples of how government is using technology and in particular uh, iot devices to make a difference in the lives of citizens these include uh, e mitra bhamasha hub which is which is giving wings to startup uh, entrepreneurs uh, the largest data center uh, that we have in the country right here in jaipur the jan aadhar the rghs the skeda example the skeda systems to P phed city lights however the biggest um, and and you did speak about various challenges uh, including data privacy and a um, uh, lot of data getting generated uh from iot devices uh the biggest takeaway for me was how iot devices can help in garbage collection and disposal i i i think when we go to the roads of jaipur uh while the city is pink uh at times it smells and i would request if government can do uh much more to make the city cleaner using technology uh, most welcome sir thank you so much for your eclectic uh, uh, eclectic uses and the uh, multiple uses that uh, how government is basically making use of iot now puneet uh, earlier talked about about 40 motors in in a typical america global experience including that in uh, asia pacific middle east and europe he is a leader with deep business and technology understanding in various global organizations spanning automate automotive manufacturing and management consulting he has handled multiple assignments in areas of digital transformation it strategy it consulting and corporate planning he has played key role in various business transformations by leveraging new age technologies uh, like iot blockchain rpa analytics machine learning artificial intelligence and so on and so forth uh mr hilal khan uh good afternoon everybody uh, mr somesh thank you so much for this glorifying introduction i don't think i am really worthy of this introduction 
Uh, thanks, Fiki, for inviting me over here. And thanks for this, you know, uh, interesting company. I would call it a great cocktail of creator of the technology, policy makers, and of course, users like us. So you have heard as to what policy makers have to say, as to what creator of the technology are doing in the space of IT and the related technology. I would be sharing our very humble journey in terms of digital transformation and what exactly we are doing when we are talking about transforming business using information technology, right? So I'll be just talking a little about Honda before I actually change my gear and talk about technology. Honda, we are very deeply committed in Rajasthan. We are very deeply committed in India. And we are a very philosophy driven company. We have, you know, principles, for example, respect for individual, three joys we call it, that is joy of buying, joy of selling, and joy of creating. And we are here, and we are globally present with a vision to provide Indian people with a stress-free and enjoyable life, and lead the advancement of mobility, and enable people everywhere in the world to improve their lives. Honda Cars India Limited was established in 1995. We are currently producing Honda Jazz. I am sure some of you must be driving and enjoying having great experience. Honda WRV, Honda Amaze, City and Hybrid Electric for our commitment to the environment. We are present in Rajasthan, we are present in Greater Noida, we are present in Mumbai, Kolkata and Chennai in terms of our zonal office and warehouses. Now, Coming back to the topic of today, that's business transformation through technology disruption. So before I actually talk about business transformation through technology disruption, let me first talk about what is happening in the auto industry and what is happening in the IT industry and why this marriage is really important. So as a matter of fact, auto industry is going through a disruption and that disruption is primarily on account of case wherein case stands for connected, autonomous, shared and electric. And at the same time there is a disruption that is happening in the IT industry and that disruption is on account of 5G, IoT, blockchain, artificial intelligence and the disruption which is happening in the auto industry and the technology industry is giving us lot of opportunity to see as to how we can gainfully utilize technology for the tangible business outcome. Mr. Somesh and before that Mr. Mittal talked about the technology evolution let me just put it in the perspective and if I talk about last two decades from 2000 to 2020, the first decade was on the online consumer business wherein we have seen two waves related to internet and mobile. I am not disputing or questioning the you know figures talked about by Mr. Mittal in terms of number of devices but I have some more data which is saying that, you know, by 2020, we are already having 50 billion connected devices, right? And the era from internet to mobile to internet of things and, you know, now with AI and robotics, we are moving from online consumer business to new industrial revolution. And this revolution is going to give lot of leverage to organization like us as to how to drive the tangible business outcome. 
Now, when we talk about the business transformation, we have to first understand as to what is the underlying condition that's actually taking us for that transformation and how technology is actually enabling us. So, I try to find out three conditions. One, the market dynamics are changing. Second, the customer behavior is changing. And third, the supply chain disruption is happening. I am not saying currency pandemic. It's happening in general. We can understand the chip shortage today available, you know, uh, there in the market today. This has put a lot of pressure on the industry and there is a great sense of crisis. And that great sense of crisis is actually pushing us to change our gear. This is actually helping us to adjust our approach. And the approach is we have to change our style from pro reactive to proactive. And we have to think that we are not here just for the implementation of the technology, but the role of IT is to create value for the business. So our mission is to steer towards generating new value. And how we can generate new value? We have to understand as to what are the themes today on the basis of what is happening in the market. One, we have to open the way for customer influence. And why it is important for the industry today or for car manufacturer like us? Because we have to understand the voice of the customer. We have to understand the voice of the social because customer today is exerting much bigger influence as to what we are producing, as to what he is experiencing. So customer expectation is actually rising and his tolerance, tolerance is actually decreasing. So we have to build deep one-to-one -one customer relationship. The second thing is that we have to switch on the ignition to a digital and physical innovation. And we have to find out the touch points as to how we can interact with our customer. A customer from his awareness stage to the interest and when he is having the consideration to buy a car, when he is purchasing the car, retention of the customer and then converting that customer as an advocate for the repurchase. We have various touch points and all those touch points we have to find out as to how we can use technology in each touch point so that we can establish a new model, new business model with the help of the digital services. The third thing is that we have to craft engaging customer experience. And what does it really mean? I was using my Apple phone and I was thinking that if Apple ever came to me to understand my needs or my requirements, no. They have anticipated as to what technology can do and what could be the possible requirement of the customer and on the basis of that they have created a product. Now we have to shift our gear in understanding our customer in terms of a product to his needs which is on the basis of experience, experience of the product and experience of the services. So we have to dig as to what customer really needs. So to sum it up, we have identified three key themes that is opening the way for customer influence, switching on the ignition to digital physical innovation and creating crafting customer experience. Any typical customer like us or a manufacturing industry like us, when we run our IT, it is broadly categorized into three parts. Run, growth and the transform. Run is just, you know, hygiene, keeping the lights on. Growth, we are doing something on account of efficiency and productivity. But transform is something which is fundamentally changing our business in terms of top line of the business and the bottom line of the business. And these are a couple of initiatives that we have taken in the transform area. And for an organization like us to transform, there are three keys which are really important for the success in terms of evaluation of the platform. And that is creating an enterprise business platform, that's the foundation. Then creating an IoT platform for auto, that is for connected autonomous shared and electric that I have discussed. And then customer engagement platform. 
so we have created this platform wherein we are having multiple you know solutions for our integrated infrastructure which is defense part of it we actually has given two pillars to our it one is the defense part of it and second is the offense part of it the defense part of it is primarily building the base creating the foundation improving the efficiency and improving the productivity and the offense part of it which is actually bringing direct business benefits to the company so i will be giving one example of enterprise business platform and this is one area which is a real life example as to how we are using iot many people have talked about you know how iot is helping business this is the real example of how iot is actually helping business this is my typical shop floor i have taken the example of my frame shop wherein the car is moving from uh, assembly frame on uh, to ef com uh, combination then airbag unit immobilizer and assembly frame off so i have created four you know key areas one wherein you know the auto vehicle detection is happening the vehicle is moving on the shop floor and the vehicle is auto detected with the help of the iot device and then there is a win number extraction win number is vehicle identification number so for each vehicle there is a unique key and this combination is extremely important because this need to be full proof and then there is a key number detection which is happening at number 3 which is also an iot enabled device and then we are combining these two the objective of having this solution is to ensure zero mismatch between win and key number and this is actually helping in terms of improving our productivity by 25% mapping of win to key is 100% accurate there is no discrepancy between the two and station tag time has reduced from 120 second to 70 second so this this is one of very great example as to how we are using iot in a typical shop floor i will be giving another example as to how we are using towards the customer side this is the offense side of my business wherein we are having a product that is an iot enabled product i am sure that some of you might be driving a honda city which is a connected car today as a matter of fact honda was the first company to introduce the first connected car in the indian market and then we are having the customer who is using the mobile app to track his you know uh, car usage to understand as to how his car is driven and then we are having various solutions at you know honda oem now what is happening as a use case that the customer is having a connected application the car is having iot device when the customer is driving we are constantly capturing the data from the iot device and we are able to determine the driving habits of the individual so today you are going for the car insurance but tomorrow when you want to go for the car insurance probably the premium for mr x will be different for the premium for mr y because the premium is determined on the basis of the usage based insurance how you are driving you are driving like a rocket you are applying brake in a very harsh manner so on the basis of your you know driving habits we are constantly creating a driving score for each driver when you are driving your car suppose you are take you are you have a chauffeur driven car your kids are going to school you can sit at your home and you can understand as to how the chauffeur is driving your car if your kids are safe or not you are going to a shopping mall or a hotel you want to find out your car with the help of this iot technology you can find out your car in case of accident in case of roadside emergency this can automatically trigger an alarm that can reach to the you know using the cloud uh, to the you know uh, hospital and an, an ambulance or a roadside assistance can be you know managed or arranged for you similarly there are you know multiple benefits with the help of voice based application so we are the first company to introduce alexa or google assistant using you know with the help of iot technology wherein sitting in the car before reaching at your home you can ask alexa to switch on your ac at the home or before entering your car you can switch on your car and ask alexa to start the engine and start the ac so that when you are entering in the car the car is actually cool 
so this kind of real life example we are having in the connected car using iot as a technology now to sum it uh, sum it up my understanding is that digital business transformation is a challenge and it's a opportunity both we need to be agile to understand the changing behavior of customer and the market and it's an enterprise mandate rather than an it initiative honda was founded by a gentleman by the name of suichiro honda so 75 years back what he has said i want to sum it up using one of the quote from him so he said that instead of being afraid of the challenge and failure be a, be afraid of avoiding the challenge and doing nothing with this i conclude my presentation thank you so much and thanks for having me with you thank you thank you khan saab for taking us through very interesting examples of how I iot is being used in in honda cars and taking us through the defense offense framework as well as the overall framework for using iot uh, as also amazed by uh, by the case framework and i looked it up while you're talking and and something that uh, a lot of other industries can also use right what really uh, was a key takeaway for me is in the whole thing how you keeping customer at the center and designing everything around it i'll have some difficult questions for you when i come to the questions round thank you so much uh next uh, i'd like to invite dr dinesh gopalani who is head of computer science and engineering department in our mnit he is, has more than 23 years of teaching and research experience he taught various courses at mnit jaipur iit jodhpur iit jammu jammu as visiting faculty his research interests are programming languages compilers database management systems and nlp he has published more than 50 research articles in reputed journals and conference proceedings in these areas he has guided 9 phd and 30 mtech dissertations presently he is supervising four phd scholars and five mtech students in exotic topics like sentiment analysis fake news detection recommender systems etc hoping to learn from you uh, sir thank you thank you mr somesh thank you fiki for inviting me here for the summit uh good afternoon to my fellow speakers and uh, the audience the participants for the summit uh earlier i was thinking about uh, taking something on 5g and uh, iot but then when i realized the speakers are mostly from the industries so i thought of taking a different direction so rather i will be covering the academics and research in the field of iot so it industries and other industries they are doing their job and education sector is also playing an important role so because it needs to cater to the demand of uh, uh, demand which is going to increase in the coming years right so the academic institutes are offering large number of courses in the field of uh, iot to provide a pool of uh, trained and talented professionals so i'll be covering both aspects the academics first and then the research what are the research problems in the field of iot so the contribution uh, with respect to academics uh, uh, in the field of iot is threefold so first is the certificate courses so every institute every university in india and abroad is offering large number of certificate courses in the field of iot as well as in other emerging technologies uh, these courses are in the form of maybe short term courses faculty development programs workshops diploma pg diploma courses okay and now uh, we have with covid we have the online courses also so people like uh, people from industry they can go for uh, there are many mooc platforms available actually 
Coursera is one, SOEM is there. So you can go for uh, uh, these courses. IIT Madras is offering large number of uh, courses, including one course in IoT also. It's an online course. So you can enroll and you can uh, learn many new things actually. I know definitely you are doing your job, but at the same time, learning never stops actually. Learning is endless. Then uh, we are having some institutes which are offering the mainstream, uh, the BTEC, MS, MTech programs also, like uh, IIT Jodhpur. Recently they have started MTech in uh, sensors and internet of things also. Okay. And uh, many of the institutes offer MTech uh, in part-time mode, uh, part mode also, okay, specifically for industry people. And then the third dimension is uh, like uh, some institutes, they have started that also, BTech and CSE with a specialization in some in emerging technology. So in uh, IoT also, it's, they are offering few courses and they are offering BTech and CSE with a specialization in IoT. Now, coming to MNIT Jaipur, so uh, recently uh, we have revised the curricular structure for both uh, our UG and PG programs, which is in line with uh, NEP 2020. NEP is a new education policy, and uh, we have introduced uh, uh, many things like uh, uh, now the curriculum structure is uh, quite dynamic, flexible for the students. We are uh, having uh, now the concept of minor and major. So it's like uh, some student has come for, let's say he is admitted in BTEC in chemical engineering, but he is very keen in computer science. So he can go for minor in computer science. Likewise, uh, BTEC in mechanical with minor in management. So those things which were not there earlier, but now uh, not only MIT Jaipur, many other institutes have started the concept of uh, the minor actually. Okay, so we are looking for a multidisciplinary education. So uh, as part of that revision which I was talking about, the curriculum structure, so we are, are going to offer many courses at uh, UG and PG level. So some of the courses related to IoT, IoT, Internet of Things, 5G technology, quantum computing, and so on. So many courses we have, we are actually started with and along with regular teaching, we conduct uh, various technical events on regular intervals. So in the field of IoT, we have organized a couple of workshops, one international conference also on IoT and connected technologies. Okay. And then a uh, large number of short term courses we do conduct on regular intervals. I will be a bit fast. I know uh, I should not come between you and the lunch actually. So many people may be wondering, uh, okay. So I'll, I'll not take much time. Let us come to the now research point. So in the last two decades, especially the last 10 years, the IoT has become, uh, it is very active area of research, okay. Large number of publications are happening. If you see the number, uh, it's almost uh, more than 20,000 in a year. That's the number of publications in the field of IoT, okay? But still, uh, I should say it is not yet matured. Lot of things are still open. Lot of research problems are there, okay? So what I have done is I have tried to uh, group these problems into four broader categories and uh, we'll be covering uh, that. So first one is uh, technology and standards. So I should say uh, they should also agree that many of the IoT systems are not designed properly. They are poorly designed because of the lack of the standardization and technology. So the search community is working hard to do that. Then the other aspect, uh, other domain of research is in the data management because these IoT devices, sensors especially, they are going to, they are generating large volume of data. So it requires proper management, uh, which includes not just storage, the, the, the processing analysis part also. Okay. I'll be covering in detail actually, uh, all the four domains. Then very, very important security aspect, because as other systems, whether they are, uh, software or hardware systems. So 
security is a common problem actually so with the growth of iot in the same intensity the number of the kind of attacks are also increasing so as researchers we need to work on that part also and then uh, there are some issues uh, which are very pertaining to very specific uh, application so that are being covered in the applications domain okay because number of problems were large so i try to uh, make uh, grouping for the same so let us do it quickly uh, with respect to technology and standards so as i was telling there is no uh, uh, there is a lack of mature iot technologies so we need to have uh, standards which include uh, the standards for the protocols network and communication protocols data aggregation standards we uh, we shall look for that audit and logging standards are yet not defined so they are also very important they are then uh, the product life cycle in the age of iot is not same as uh, compared to the traditional waterfall model which you might have studied as in your earlier courses because things are completely different now like if i tell you one stage in the iot development is uh, decommissioning because you need to take out the device you need to dismantle the device that has to be done in a secure manner so there are many new things are coming up so we need to look for the principles for software engineering with respect to iot development as well then uh, fog computing edge computing cloud computing you must have heard and it is by now mature so fog computing is basically a decentralized computing infrastructure and uh, which is somewhere between the data source and and the cloud actually okay because large amount of data is being generated by these iot devices so if we send directly everything to the cloud there will be overhead in the form of communication cost actually so why to unnecessarily send the irrelevant data to the cloud actually so why don't we perform some sort of computing processing at the at the device layer or in between the device and the cloud so this is a new thing coming up people are working on that then uh, big data is another very very important term in the technical world now okay and since uh, these iot applications they are going to generate large volume of data okay so these two are very important and uh, areas they we need to work uh, these uh, technologies need to work together actually iot and big data then uh, blockchain technology is again uh, very important playing a very important role now even though it started with the implementation of underlying uh, technology for bitcoin cryptocurrency only but now it has got many applications it has diverse applications in fact some of the applications are common with iot okay so now people are talking about blockchain of things also fusion of these two technologies so a lot of research is happening in this area also then uh, coming to the other domain another dimension it is data management okay so managing large amount of iot data and especially when things are majority of the devices are either the data producers or consumers actually so it is uh, the volume as well as the velocity the speed in in the order they are generating the data is also huge actually because these sensing devices they are sensing large volume of sensing units per second also so it's not only volume it is velocity also the data are being continuously generated and then uh, another point is uh, uh, the data generated may be in different formats so heterogeneity so scalability is the first thing then heterogeneity is another important aspect so we need to have efficient uh, uh, data storage okay so those traditional uh, dbms systems may not work so we need to look for the large scale and distributed storage systems for storing the data mobility and scalability of iot data is another aspect so i'm just giving you the kind of possibilities like where the research is happening now after data is collected stored then the important thing is the 
we need to because ultimately we need to discover the the information the knowledge from that data actually okay so we need to develop we need to come up with uh, machine learning ai algorithms for uh, carrying this job automated decision making then coming to the third dimension which is uh, security and privacy issues okay so we are looking for uh, design and develop more secure algorithms to prevent attacks on iot devices and then uh, we need to secure uh, the data as well the uh, we need to secure the iot generated data at all the phases right from the beginning till the last from the generation to the processing then there are many challenges here also we are having the limited computation power available with uh, many of the iot devices and then the uh, the solutions are there there are many proposed systems existing systems but they cater to specific they target only one or two security parameters security parameters are also many okay uh, if you see it is uh, authorization authentication integrity of data privacy of data many parameters are there so many of the systems uh, they are uh, not providing the complete solution So now we need to have uh, some cryptographic methodologies with uh, uh, constraint as limited computation and communication overhead. Then at the same time, uh, these systems they need to guarantee the preservation of users' privacy as well. And then other issues related to security are confidentiality in communication, trust between and among the communication parties, very important. and the integrity of data and message so these are all open problems and uh, finally coming to the applications so there are many uh, problems the challenges which are specific to a particular application and they are also being discussed so applications of iot are very diverse like if you see one is in the healthcare so we are definitely we are not able to afford uh, uh, bulky sensor devices in human body so the those devices has to be very very small actually so now we are talking about internet of nano things basically integrating nano sensors in these objects then uh, iot in smart agriculture there may be issues may be different from the healthcare so here the issues may be climate effects higher yields resource optimization optimization of resources natural as well as like uh, fertilizers and chemicals how we can optimize these resources natural resources will be land and water and other things and then uh, we have uh, 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 iot in smart city and here the challenges may be uh, the iot interoperability because the de devices are heterogeneous nature and uh, they may result into poor integration so iot interoper interoperability is another uh, research field within that you may have legal and social aspects so the demand of real time computing power and low latency is required for the real time applications so these are all uh, uh, problems uh, where uh, the research community is uh, dealing with okay so i think this is my last slide so thank you very much for uh, having patience thank you so much thank you dr dinesh for uh, taking us through iot in academia and research the relevant courses uh, in this field and in detail various research challenges that we face thank you so much now uh, i'll put up one question uh, each to the panelists um and uh, then we'll open the floor for uh, questions if any of the audiences have any questions so my first question goes to chintan of course now he talked about chintan you talked about various um, iot based uh, startups that you personally are supervising and accelerating now when can we see or what does it take 
for an IoT startup or a technology startup from place like Jaipur or Rajasthan to scale up like Google did or Microsoft did or Amazon did. What are the key ingredients and can we hope to see something along those lines in IoT or one of the rele relevant technologies? Uh, thank you for the audible. Yeah. Thank you for that question, Somesh Ji. So I think yeah, the scalability of IoT startups is not going to be as much as a as a pure cloud or uh, you know a, a regular tech sort of a startup. Uh, I mean that typically when when we come in, uh, when we start supporting startups, it's at a very early stage, and for a lot of IoT startups, there is that period where the product validation and customer validation needs to be done. So that that's that tends to be a fairly long drawn period. And the other thing that we have seen is, uh, as I was also mentioning, that a lot of these IoT startups are uh, essentially using, using IoT to solve a problem, right? And the examples that I gave, whether it is in agriculture or it's in mental health or it's in, uh, in the case of crafts, uh, you know, so, uh, I mean, there may be IoT startups which are creating devices which other businesses use. So I think the scalability there may be higher. Uh, but our focus is really to look at the problems of Bharat and trying to see how technology can be used to solve that. So there again, there is a issue of adaptability. You know, so how do farmers? Uh, you know, I was I was just talking about you, you're talking about the uh, you know the challenges of IoT in agriculture, one of the biggest challenges is that how will, how can an individual farmer, which is a very small farmer in the Indian context, buy, or buy that soil monitoring or the weather monitoring device. So it will have to be bought at a group level. So an FPO buys it or a farmer cooperative buys it. So essentially the point which I'm trying to make is a lot of the IoT startups that we support, which are essentially trying to solve problems for Bharat, they run into these two issues. One is that the product development and prototyping cycle is long and second is adaptability has its own challenges. Uh, so I don't think it's very likely that we'll see a Google at least in the, in the domains that we are talking about. Uh, there will be businesses which will scale up. They will maybe become 50 crore, 100 crore kind of businesses, but they will take their own time. That, that's what my sense is. They will become in fact, we have a term called high growth businesses. So they may become high growth businesses. They may not become unicorns anytime soon. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Chintan, for that. Um, now, I, I, I'd like to see if anybody in audience has any question for, for the participants. Dimple, uh, is it possible to give? If you can introduce yourself, state the question, uh, of course, and indicate of course. who it is for, oh. that will help. Uh, good afternoon, I am Omesh Khichi. Uh, I am an officer of Indian Telecom Service. Uh, I have been working uh, for last 24 year, uh, 25 years in the telecom industry, and uh, presently heading uh, enterprise business in BSNL. Uh, uh, thank you, Fiki, for inviting us uh, in a such a nice uh, uh, environment and program. Uh, uh, I would like to uh, take your two, three minutes. Uh, 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 most of the speakers covered about uh, uh, the end terminal, IoT terminals, and then the cloud uh, where data is stored. Uh, I would like to notice one thing is that the most important part uh, of connecting those, these two things is the core network. How uh, an IoT terminal will be connected to its server or a cloud-based software or like that. Uh, as Mr. Vadarajan uh, rightly told that not of services, uh, DOIT services uh, uh, has been taken in place and I am also proud that in RAS1, in RASnet, and presently that electricity smart meters, uh, and then the traffic management cameras, all the things are uh, working on a core network, and most of the uh, core network is provided by BSNL. Uh, you will all appreciate it. Uh, uh, 
Uh, one most important thing from the government of India, our uh, uh, Honorable uh, Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, and uh, our Minister, uh, uh, Mr. Ashwini Vaishnav, uh, their dream is to connect, uh, to provide this infrastructure core network right up to the uh, a particular village or every citizen of this country. And a Bharat Net project, all of you, I think you have heard, Bharat Net project has been uh, in place. Uh, I am happy to inform that uh, around 9,000 villages has been covered under Bharat Net. This is... Sir, is there a question in there? Uh, I, 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 I'm just, 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 just uh, uh, creating an environment. So, uh, uh, I would like to uh, all the speakers that uh, please do utilize this Bharat Net network for connecting, for enabling IoT services to the common mass. Uh, 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 one, uh, Mr. Chintan Bakshi, uh, he has uh, very well explained all the uh, startups uh, and uh, farms, farmers and common mass and mo most of the things, that, uh, there was a very nice presentation. I would like to ask a, a particular question to uh, Mr. Chintan Bakshi uh, that what next to IoT? Is, is there any, anything next to IoT that just uh, devices will be controlled or uh, the, the humankind will be uh, benefited from anything next to IoT? The, the way we would uh, look at it as a as a startup accelerator and a seed fund, the bigger challenge is is not what next in terms of technology. The bigger challenge is adaptability of technology, which is what I was trying to say. I mean, while there are IoT devices available for farmers, but an individual farmer, which is a small landholder, may not be able to buy those technology, or it may not be possible for. See, buying is one thing. Distribution is a huge channel, a challenge. So if I am a startup, if I want to reach out to farmers for whom I have a technology, how do I reach to them? So my product may be costing 5,000 rupees, but by the time it reaches the farmer, the cost will be significantly higher. If you include customer acquisition, servicing, distribution costs, I mean, there are these business costs and transactions which are, which are very, very important, as important as the product itself. Uh, so to answer your question, I think there are, there are enough technologies within IoT available, but the important uh, thing is how do we maybe bring the cost down? How do we have business model innovation? So maybe, you know, you have a group of farmers who buy that product. Why will farmers collaborate? There are things called, there are cooperatives and FPOs, et cetera, which are there. So you have to go through them. Uh, I mean, not all farmers are connected to FPOs. So I think those are the, the bigger challenges. And that's where uh, an incubator or an accelerator like ours is, is looking at, uh, you know, uh, how to make the technology available so that it solves a problem. I mean, I didn't answer your question, but what I'm saying is that our attention is not on what's the cutting edge in technology. Our attention is, and that's, where, that, that's what startup founders do. See, we don't have expertise in technology. Startup founders have that expertise. They are the ones who are looking at it. Our objective is to try and help them to see how they can implement it through funding, through support, and all that. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Chintan. Any other question from? Yes, ma'am. My question is to Mr. No, no, Khan. To Mr. Khan from uh, Honda Motors. Uh, uh, sir, I am Shakti Devesa Sharma, an independent counselor for social reforms from Delhi. And uh, my question to you is that uh, being in Delhi, you might be already aware that diesel cars are not being allowed beyond 10 years. So now the people who have just bought their uh, Honda cars, uh, uh, say, you know, like uh, they're coming close to uh, 10 years, are you developing any technology where those cars can be uh, converted into either electronic cars or can be converted into petrol cars um, through IT. Uh, uh, Ms. Sharma, thank you so much for your question. I wish I could, you know, respond to your question, but I believe I am not competent enough to, you know, 
talk about this subject. <coughs> However, I would like to answer you in terms of the intention of any car manufacturer. And that's about uh, bringing convenience, safety, and fun to our customers and protecting your investment. At a time when the policy is constantly changing and there's a lot of pressure on you know, auto OEM, how to create a win-win situation for us, for our ecosystem and for our customers, that's a constant endeavor. What exactly we are going to do, it would be difficult for me to answer, but I can definitely take it up internally and probably we can try to connect you one-to-one. -one. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank uh, you, Khan One question to all the panelists. We are continuously talking of IoT and we are talking about AI and uh, robots and everything. And I'm sure we all are aware, all on the panel and all here, that uh, brain hacking has been going on for a very long time. Yeah, remote neural monitoring has been going on for a very long time in Western countries and there are about 36 uh, million people who have been affected. And it has entered India eight years back. And uh, now women and small girls are being made target to it. Their brains are being fed, their directions while moving are being changed. They are being transformed into robots. So how is it India, or let's say Rajasthan looking at it, uh, or is it looking at it at all? So that's a difficult question, at least for me. I'd invite if any of the panelists have an answer to that question. I'm also not competent, but what I think, I can just tell my views. Like, there are advantages of technology, but there is always a opposite side also in every technology. So same with IT. So IT uh, is very useful, but uh, IT has been also doing a lot of, like we know this all cyber crime, which is uh, basically the outcome of IT also. So what I think that these, any new technology come, there is a plus, there is a minus. Uh, and IT will come up with some solution Right? But what happens that even the hackers come up with some bigger problem. So this will keep on going, right? The only thing which I can think is that uh, the basics of everything, uh, especially the crime, is the uh, this uh, uh, law and justice system. So I think government should uh, basically, if they focus on the law and justice system, court system, police system, and make them uh, IT, uh, I would say, educated also because uh, maybe judges are not knowing about that how people are making crime and even the police which i have seen that police uh, is not able to understand exactly that how the crimes has been done so maybe those changes can be done but i think any technology which i see whether it is uh, whatever it is but they come up with plus side but they also come up with negative because there are people who always think of the negative side of any technology. I'm sorry if I sounded like the person on the negative side, but then I didn't mean to. I just wanted to make everybody aware that uh, remote neural monitoring, electronic harassment and gang stalking, voice to skull, these all are going on. We uh, need to be aware of all this. All these things are uh, available on Google if you search for it. Uh, so, and uh, it actually, actually, it's not law. It's not law that that is that would work at all because it could be anybody sitting in the neighboring country, again playing with your brain. Say somebody in Pakistan. It could be somebody in Bangladesh. Yeah. So. Now we have to have a solution to cut off the signals of the people who are playing with your brain. 
So that, that is a solution that we need to come up because the hackers work much more harder than us. They are 10 steps uh, ahead of us. And they do not sit in prominent locations. They sit in their hideouts. Small, small, tiny, tiny hideouts with their computers and their, you know, neurons. So just wanted to bring it to your notice that uh, we are far way behind, you know, when we're talking about all this. We need to look further ahead into this danger, which is, you know, which will not let humans be hum humans at all. Thank you. Yeah, I would add a couple of more things into it. As Mr. Puneet rightly said, that the life is full of good and evil both. So therefore, these things keeps the, these things will keep happening. There are two things which are necessary for the citizens as a whole. One is awareness because what we read, what we come to know about other colleagues and other friends. Second is education. These two things are very important for a society which is well educated and well aware the possibility of getting into such traps is very less. Second, in case of state of Rajasthan, the police is also equipping themselves with a lot of technology. Like I, I spoke about the control and command center of Abhay command centers. Other than that, police officials are all being continuously trained. They are being trained. There are locations like, I give you a simple example of Bharatpur. There is a uh, Tehsil in Bharatpur where the entire village is involved into such activities. They are providing trainings to the masses. If we, one goes there, they will find in a hut, they are providing, in a, they may not be wearing good clothes, but still they are training the other fellows of how to perform cyber crimes. So those things are happening, not only from foreign country, in India also it is happening. But police is also trying to, you know, catch hold of them and uh, uh, making people aware. So that way things will go. As you rightly said that what we think about, they, they are much, much ahead than what we are doing. But still we'll have to catch up with them. Rather than they catch up with us, we'll have to catch up with them. Something like that. And I, I, I think conferences like this make us aware of such issues and bring them in open. Thank you so much, ma'am, for, for bringing that issue. Any other question from the audience? Last question we'll take. Hello everyone. This is Shan Bhatia from Pinnacle Infotech Solutions. I am working in the R&D department. I have one question to Mr. Puneet that we are talking about the IoT devices. But the main part is that uh, how companies are looking for the securing the data which is accommodated with the IoT devices and the second part is how companies are using the steps to managing those data. For example, we have a cloud storage and we are using the cloud storage for storage the data of the IoT devices. So how companies are thinking in future that uh, because there is a limit of the storage also. So how companies is looking into these situations for securing the data and storing the data for IoT devices. So since we have a close lunch, I will try to answer uh, uh, very shortly. So security or uh, this privacy is a big concern, especially in the corona times when there is a lot of work from home, remote working is happening. And I can tell you that other than cloud, IoT, uh, artificial intelligence, one main topic as of today is basically the security. And there are companies, there are startups, there are startups and startups who has become unicorns just in the, into the security field. So on one side, actually, uh, there is a data theft and those things, but there are also, on the other side, uh, hundreds and thousands of companies are coming which are providing this uh, security so solution. And uh, companies are spending a lot of amount. Like somebody was telling me, and uh, again, this is, that banks IT, so if bank is spending X money into the IT, then 0.1X or 10% of that IT goes just into the security. So every company actually, whatever money they spend in IT, certain percentage of that IT budget also should go into the security. That is the solution. Just a small answer. So as the session chair, I can rightfully be accused of delaying your lunches. 
However, let me quickly take care of that. Um, on my personal behalf and on behalf of Vicky, um, people like Dimple, Atul, etc., I'd like to thank uh, all the panelists, um, Chintan, then uh, Mr. Khan, Mr. Varadrajan, Puneet, and Dinesh Ji. And um, we would uh, like to give mementos to all the participants of the panel. Thank you. We can now proceed for lunch. Thank you. Thank you.